you so much. Um, so I'm going to uh, speak about how we thought about implementation and then scaling um, a hospital at home program in our health system. Um, I want to acknowledge um, two of our funders. When we started our program, we got a large grant from, our, um, from Medicare, from our government, to be able to start our program. And then we also had funding from the Hartford Foundation. I have no conflicts of interest. Um, we do have a joint venture with a company to, um, called Contessa Health to implement our program. Um, but we have, I have no financial interest in that. So in the 15 minutes, I'd like to speak on the importance of having institutional support when you start a program. I'm going to touch on what our model is, what are the benefits. I know I'm speaking to the, preaching to the choir here, but I will talk about the benefits and what outcomes exist. Why would a health system, especially in the US, want to implement a hospital at home mo model where they're taking away potential revenue, and challenges with that implementation and what scale could look like. So this was a pretty important ad that was run in the New York Times literally within six months of us starting a program, which was just, just shows how much our hospital supported our program. So they ran this ad saying, if our beds are filled, it means we've failed, which I think is, is just pretty great. And in the small print, which you can't read, are two or three programs that Mount Sinai has, but ours is one of them in there. And that has been instrumental for us to be able to do our program. If we didn't have that, we would be a small little pilot on the side of our hospital. Um, but with the ability to meet with the leadership constantly of our institution, we're able to bring our program to where it is. So very briefly, I'm going to touch on what our model is. We meet most of our patients in the emergency room, but we can take them from clinic. We can take them direct from home. And then we um, assess them for eligibility. We assess their home situation in the emergency room. We're asking them a questionnaire about their home situation. We organize the services, and we transport them home in an ambulance. Our acute care is typically three to five days, which is daily physician visits or NP. We have uh, typically two nursing visits a day. We coordinate IV meds, oxygen, x-rays, labs. We have 24-7 telephonic support with the ability of um, paramedics to go 24 hours a day. At the end of the three to five days, they are discharged from the acute phase, and they go into our post-acute monitoring phase where we follow them for a total of 30 days. Um, the goal in that time is to get them hooked up back with their primary care provider and um, stabilize. They may get community nursing at that point, not the nurses from our team. Um, and we can do emergency visits if needed during that time. So why consider hospital at home? And there's many reasons, but I'm going to touch on three of them, which is improving the care that they receive, the increased patient satisfaction and the potential for lower cost. Um, the hospital at home benefits um, include things like reduction in, in hospital acquired infections, reduced rates of readmission, reduced rates of adverse events like falls that can happen in the hospital, reduced risk of delirium, improved functional mobility. Um, you know, in institutions, patients spend a majority of their time in a bed or a wheelchair. And if there is functional rehabilitation going on during the acute period, it's practiced right in their home, own home. This is some data that we had from our first three years of our program, where we had the grant from um, our government um, for the program. And at that time, our length of stay compared to control patients, which were patients who were screened the exact same way in an emergency room, but we just did not offer the services. It was in one of our other hospitals or different hours than we were available to admit them. And so our patients had an average length of stay of 3.2 days, while the control patients, um, it was 5.5 days. The readmissions went from 15% in 30 days to 8%. Emergency room visits from 11 to um, about 6%. Um, and we had increased use of home health after our services than the, the patients who were in the control. Very, tip, uh, very common, these are similar results to many others of you have had um, with your programs. We also 
um, did a survey um, of patient satisfaction after a hospitalization. It's a common survey that's done in all the US hospitals. And we did a subset of that with our patients. And we had improved um, scores compared to our control patients. Communication they felt was better with both the nurses and physicians. This is not data from us, this is just one example, and, and there's many out there of, of what the cost reductions might be. Um, and this is from New Mexico, where they had 19% lower um, costs. So now that we've kind of reviewed those, those things, there's three important things of why you might consider it, but is that enough for a health system to implement this? You're taking revenue potentially away from them. And um, why would they want to start a program like this? So this is where I want to spend a little bit of time. So you know, you might have to understand a little bit more about the US health system. You know, we don't have one payer, of course. Um, we have many of our patients have Medicare, which is kind of like one payer. But even within Medicare, there's um, privately managed Medicare pr uh, plans. And so, the patients, when they have um, in those those plans, they might have the they have the ability to contract with a hospital for different rates than re regular Medicare might have, and those rates might be based on criteria. So, for example, at Mount Sinai, we have a number of managed Medicare plans that we take total risk on. So we're responsible for those patients. So if we do more primary care and preventive care and less hospitalizations, that's better for the patient and better for the bottom line, for example. Um, and so those are value-based contracts. So if we're doing improved care, it doesn't really matter where the patient is, it, because they're, if they're in the, in the hospital at home program, they're getting better care, that's great. And there's actually penalties for readmissions in some of our plans, both our straight Medicare plan and some of our managed plan. So those might be two reasons why a health system would want to do hospital at home. Patient satisfaction. It's increasingly more and more important. Um, there's being surveyed after every doctor's visit, every hospitalization. Those ratings are publicly available. And so if you have better ratings, you might bring in new patients to your hospital because of this new offering. And some of the value-based contracts are based on patient satisfaction. The lower cost is really important to our health system. So if you have value-based contracts, they will want to have the patient, if they have the same outcomes or better outcomes in the lower cost um, uh, setting. In our health system, our beds are full. A typical patient might wait 16 hours in the emergency room for a bed. Um, and so if, if our beds are full and we're able to help the health system take patients out of the emergency room and do a hospital at home, that is really helpful. And the fourth reason that's separate from those first three that I mentioned is if you already have some of the infrastructure, it certainly makes the lift of starting a program. We talked a little bit this morning about starting small or starting big right away, but if you have some of that infrastructure already, it certainly makes that first step much easier. And things that can help that are home-based primary care programs, a home health agency, durable medical equipment, and fusion company. In the U.S., all of that is private, and so therefore, you know, it's not like um, contracting with the one home health agency that exists in your region, which many of you might have in other countries. So once you've convinced the health system to um, do that. Now we're talking about how do you actually implement it, the nitty gritty of that, and how do you scale it. And these are just a few of the things that I thought were very challenging for us, um, mostly because the current payment system does not match what's needed for the program. We don't have what Australia has where it's matched one for one for a hospitalization. And in, indeed, actually, in the US right now, that's really one of the biggest challenges is how we pay for a hospital at home. So, we can do home visits. There's home bi visit reimbursement codes, and you can do that, and you can get reimbursed for that. Um, but video visits are not reimbursed. Nursing isn't reimbursed except in a home health agency kind of um, bundled payment, and that's really only set up 
for maybe three times a week. Yeah, maybe you could do it every day nursing, but certainly not the twice a day nursing or three times a day nursing that might be required for hospital at home. IV antibiotics. You can get IV antibiotics at home, usually from a post-hospital. You might need six weeks of antibiotics for some condition where it can be all set up 48 hours in advance. But to do that, you're in the ER, I need IV, IV antibiotics delivered to the patient's home before the nurse actually gets to the home, that gets really challenging. And our standards is trying to get all that equipment to patients within two hours after the need is identified. Processing labs like inpatient labs, getting social work and physical therapy, getting durable medical equipment to the home, oxygen's not even covered for acute conditions in the U.S and then payment for community paramedicine. So these are some of our real challenges for how we're figuring out payment for our hospital at home program. We've had some success already. So as I said, the Medicare Advantage or Managed Medicaid commercial insurances have the ability and flexibility to contract directly with hospitals for rates. Um, and so we are working with them. They're interested. Um, and we have um, about four contracts right now but regulation-wise, this can't be a hospitalization, and so it's fitting an um, out inpatient payment into an outpatient world is still one of our challenges. Um, contracting for bundle payments, you know, even um, you know, even just a bundle of the three or five days, and what we really think our benefit is over that 30 days, those are challenges for the insurance company instead of all the piecemeal little visits and each individual item um, being paid for. We did submit a, a proposal to um, our government for a bundled rate that would mimic an inpatient bundled rate um, through a committee that exists now. And although that committee may not be the right way to move it forward, um, given some administrative changes that have happened, there, are, there is movement with our government um, to think about how this might be moved forward um, in the future. The last thing I want to touch on is when you're thinking about scaling, and this, a couple questions came about this morning with this, is like, what are, what are we? Are we this, this definition of hospital at home, or are we something bigger than that? I don't have the answer, but I can tell you what we did. As soon as we proposed, and originally five years ago to our government, to start this, um, we, we thought it would be a hospital at home. We proposed it would be a 30-day program, but three or five days of acute and then this monitoring phase. And we thought that was all we were going to do in our three years of our grant. Soon as we had a program, we got a thousand more requests to do so much else because now we had this mobile acute team that could go everywhere. And so over the three years, these are all the different things we tried and did, and we may not have them all now, but these are kind of potential. Once you have this acute service, you can do so many other things. And um, they may not all be officially hospital at home, but they are things maybe you can do with an acute 24-hour service. So um, in the US, we have something that's separate that's called observation unit. If someone needs less than two nights in a hospital, they're called an observation stay. It's paid differently. Um, and so we did observation unit at home. We also did palliative care unit, not hospice, but someone who would need to be inpatient for um, palliative care. We, we provided those services um, at home. We separated out very discreetly because they have a different rates of everything, mostly death, that you want to call out very differently than the typical hospital at home program. So it's, we want to make sure those patients are categorized differently. We have patients who wanted to be in our program that we call hospital averse, where actually maybe we were not the best thing, but they wouldn't go to the hospital no matter what. And we provided them maybe a second choice and got them stabilized enough to maybe get um, other services as an, as an outpatient. Holding patients in the emergency room till we could get all our services coordinated. We had a pilot of about three or five pediatric hospital at home patients. We do some completion of hospital stay at home with our veterans hospital. And then one thing that's very different is we also do, during our grant, we don't do it now, is something called rehab at home. So in the US, when you can get discharged from a hospital, you might go to hospital level rehab. You might go to a nursing home level subacute rehab, or you might get home with physical therapy. 
And we, we substituted that middle one, the, the subacute rehab services, which typically patients might go for about three weeks. We provided those services at home with our team because so many of patients didn't want to go to a nursing home facility to get services like that. It was very successful. So in the last couple seconds here, I just wanted to say that um, a supportive institution is crucial. Um, and um, to start a program, how you figure out the payment, of course, is also crucial. Um, and then scaling, you really need to assess what barriers exist in your country or locally, um, and then um, what offerings your team might have. Um, it may not be only hospital at home, it could be a broader range of services. Okay. Thank you.